All right, y'all, welcome back to Tracing Race, and it is kind of a nice day here. It is Saturday, March 6th, and we're supposed to have a practice day today at Antioch Speedway, our local track. Um, I wonder about the super truck that's underneath the tarp with the new race car trailer, but the tow vehicle is still not done yet. Um, I'm getting close on it, but just fighting little things here and there, putting it back together. Um, but I'm taking advantage of the no uh, rain in the sky right now and barbecuing a little bit. I uh, haven't done a burger and a, and a hot dog in a long time, so I'm firing up the old grill and uh, I'm back uh, on the old farmer's brewing, farmer's light. So I was working on the hobby stock motor last night, um, sitting the lash on it, getting it ready for a nice day so I can go ahead and paint it uh, when it's not so cold and humid and stuff out with all the rain in the air. Um, and I noticed something last night that wasn't right on the motor, so I'll show you guys what I was doing last night on it. Um, I had to do a little more machining on the cylinder heads with it on the block. Um, but I just mowed my grass and it looks pretty dang good. I say grass, but it's just weeds. Um, but there's nothing like the smell of fresh cut grass and springs on the horizon. Something about it I just love. I'm ready for some nice warm weather to go racing. I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of doing these videos of working in the shop and working on tow vehicles. I want to do some racing videos again. I know you guys do too. Um, so I'm real excited to get the super truck back on the track and the hobby stock motor in it and that on the track too. For sure, there will be two cars out of the Tracing Racing pit stop on the track this year. Uh, for the first time I think ever. I don't think I've ever had two track, two cars on the track um, in the same year. So let's see how it goes. All right, I just pulled the burger off the grill. I guess I spoke too soon because it's starting to sprinkle here. So I got to get this mower out of the way here. This is my grandpa's DS or DYS 4500. I know Dalton's going to be looking at this and being jealous because this is way better than his John Deere 300. This thing is a beast. It's got a twin 22 horsepower motor in it. Craftsman Intex. My problem is, is this damn seat, you gotta sit down for it to fire up. And when it's wet like this, it kind of sucks. Got you guys in the burger cam here. Check this out. I actually do have a John Deere mower. It just leaks oil really bad. This is a 100 series. I think this thing's pretty old. Needs a new seat. Gotta figure out the oil leak, but this thing actually is my favorite <laughs> mower besides uh, the fact it doesn't run right now. Um, but this thing actually, seriously, it's got some horsepower to it and just shreds the grass like no tomorrow. All right, moving on. Uh, the Duramax here, I went ahead and started it up and I was flushing the cooling system and I found that there was a leak. This water pipe that goes from the water pump here into the uh, oil cooler, well, I guess I tore a little O-ring on this uh, por portion of the pipe here. So I had to run to work, which is about 25 miles from my house, to pick up this O-ring, which is a $30 O-ring. Crazy. Uh, but I had to have it, so I had to go run and get it. And this should hopefully be the, the last piece of the puzzle here before I go ahead and start assembling the whole front end of the truck. All right, got the intercooler out down here, letting the rain kind of give that a little flush, clean out the fins. And I'm doing the same thing over here on the radiator. Don't worry, this is not my Audi. This is, <laughs> this is family that's parked here for the day. I don't drive that kind of crap. Anyways, uh, radiator over here doing the same thing, letting the rain wash through the fins. And uh, I'm trying to flush out inside here as best I can too with a garden hose. But before I put it all back together, this is a redneck engine block flush. So as you can see, got a big ass pipe on the upper radiator hose, lower radiator hose. Uh, I got blocked off here with some windshield washer fluid. And then where it goes to the reservoir here, I got the garden hose hooked up to it. All right, I guess I should also mention that uh, I did have to pull the uh, thermostats out right here uh, to get it so it's actually 
flowing, cooling out of the block. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put the thermostats back in once I uh, put the radiator and all that junk back on. All right, switching gears here again. I told you guys I'd show you what I was doing last night, machine work wise on the heads. Um, so basically when I was setting the lash, um, I have the rock arms loose here and uh, you know, with them loose, you can move the guide plate back and forth and it's best to get the uh, rock arm right over the center of the valve tip here um, and then go ahead and tighten down the rock arm. But you gotta think there's more just than side to side. There's also up and down here with the push rod. So I had to open up these push rod holes here in the head um, to half an inch. I think they're about seven sixteenths before, which are not big enough. And so what happens is, is when you put a high ratio rocker arm on, uh, like this is a 1.6, it positions the, uh, the push rod here. It positions it closer basically to where the stud is. So it brings it in here. So let's just say an exaggerated example would be a 1.5 ratio rocker arm would have the push rod up higher here and then you get less valve lift on this end. Um, so basically what was happening was is the push rod was kind of resting down on the uh, push rod hole in the cylinder head here and it wasn't far enough down to actually engage the rocker arm and the little ball there and so what was happening was um let me get this pivot ball out of there um what's happened was it was hitting there and then when i went ahead and put the ball in, in the center here it was on one side only it wasn't touching it wasn't like centered down there in the uh the bottom like it should be so my lash was getting all over the place i would set it where i want it to be and then i go ahead and rotate the motor over a couple times and it change on me a bunch I'm like what the hell's going on so yeah now when it's all bottomed out uh your push rod should not be laying on basically the the bottom portion or if you're on the other extreme the top portion it really shouldn't be touching this guy at all if you got dot, uh, guide plates you want to make sure that the push rod has plenty of clearance in this hole so anyways it took me a while to do all the uh holes and it was kind of a mess had a vacuum going i had a bunch of rags to prevent any metal from going down the motor but i wish i would have caught that earlier but i didn't but now it's good to go so i'm gonna go ahead and keep on setting the valve last year and a big shout out to bo miller for getting me my extra uh eight poly locks i needed um for this motor because i had only one bank for some reason so big shout out to bo miller from orland california for sending these to me in the usps mail appreciate it buddy I had to do a bunch of yard work today. Just couldn't get the race car stuff. Uh, but I'm pretty much done with the yard work now. And so I'm doing a swap -a -roo. I'm gonna switch to hobby stock with the diesel. Um, <laughs> as you can see, I blew a bunch of leaves today and I probably should have moved the hobby stock before I did all that because now I got some more to do. But um, I'm waiting on a part, another part. Yes, another part for the diesel. Uh, I'm waiting on a fuel line that is on back order. Um, so, I don't know what's going to get here, but I'm just going to have to go ahead and switch directions again. And uh, I'm going to see if I can put the motor in the hobby stock before I paint it, actually, because I don't want to find out that this oil pan we're using is actually too big. I don't really know if it's going to work or not. So I need to test fit it first. So that's what the plan is. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and push them, flip them, and uh, get to work. All right, pretty much got the essentials here. Barbecue spits, fishing pole water different kind of water speaker and some hot dogs did you put any bait on that thing <laughs> no, just the cinco <laughs> i got the grill master here you guys remember jack good old mullet coming back in <clears throat> at his place here in discovery bay which is basically like the uh the trailer park boys of rich people <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> kind of nice nice day have a nice cold, you know what, green and red. Take a guess. <laughs> All right, so we didn't catch shit last night. It's a good thing we're going to church. 
We didn't catch nothing last night, <laughs> as usual. Uh, probably should use some anchovies rather than hot dogs. All right, so just got back from church. I really don't drink coffee, but this is the only one I like. If you guys know about the Starbucks, like, iced coffee things they sell in like a, a glass uh, can like you can buy like gas stations and stuff that's the only one I do like but Livia she works for Starbucks so she knows how to make it with whatever stuff you know ingredients that they can make at the Starbucks and she makes it on there so I liked it it's pretty good and uh, I didn't ever show you guys the mystery chickens little house here so I'm gonna collect the egg and uh, show you guys where she hangs out at and sleeps and stuff I kind of configured this area here into a little chicken coop. Works out pretty good. <clears throat> Made a little feeder. Yeah. So she comes and pecks this little thing right here and then a bunch of food pops out. And uh, this is where her eggs are. Most of these are fake um, because uh, when I pull one out, Sometimes we get a blue jay in here that likes to try to uh, steal the eggs and eat them. So I put these fake like rocks in here. So when they peck it, they get discouraged and they don't do it anymore. It's a problem, huh? Get out of here. But yeah, this is where she hangs out at. All right, and now it's time to do a little Sunday afternoon grilling. Watching the NASCAR race. Need a little oxygen in here. All right, now this is not your everyday hot dog. This is some homemade, not homemade, but home processed duck and dooley sausage from the Chico Meat Locker. One of the perks of going hunting. All right, so you guys already know, if you've been watching the channel for a long time that Barbecuing means I can have a beer no matter what day it is. So today I got myself a uh, Armenian beer. I've been drinking a lot of this recently. Uh, it's Kalikia. It's actually really, really good. Smooth beer. Um, this is actually something I've been wanting to show you guys for a while now. I bought a smoker about six months ago. It's been sitting in this box, brand new, uh, for a while. And uh, I need to break it out one day. I know nothing about smoking. I just know I want to get into it. And uh, I know I got to season this guy up. Uh, so you guys have any recommendations on how to season a smoker like that is a, a pellet smoker, um, but it's a vertical pellet smoker. Um, anyways, drop me a comment if you guys know how to season those bad boys up. And it is absolutely gorgeous weather, especially for barbecuing and smoking in the future. So I'm ready to get on that big time. Um, so far, watching NASCAR at Phoenix, Lars ain't doing too good. Looks like he's got a stripped out left rear lug nut. But anyways, that's what I'm doing. Having a good time on a Sunday. All right, there's my duck sausage hot dog. Maybe it likes a chicken burger and some leftovers for meal prep for this week's lunch. All right, I figured that while I was waiting on parts here, I can go ahead and finish up the uh, Hobby Stocks transmission. Saginaw 3-speed here. I'm going to insert a video I did a long time ago when I started rebuilding this thing right now. All right, guys. Got a Saginaw 3-speed here we're going to put in the Hobby Stock. This was in my super stock at one time and it kept on popping out of third gear. So I'm going to go ahead and put a rebuild kit on it. And I'm just going to show you it now and then I'll show you when I'm all done with it. I'm not going to go and walk you through this. Too much stuff going on. All right, it's all done as you can see. Uh, went ahead and put the rebuild kit in it. I had to shim it a little bit so hopefully it don't pop out in third no more. Uh, but I think it's pretty much ready to go. It's actually got gear oil in it. And so I just hit it real good with some brake clean. And then uh, this is a cast iron, as you can see, Saginaw 3-speed. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a little bit of uh, heat here. And burn off. Basically, you're going to burn off, well, I'm going to burn off all the uh, moisture in the cast iron. So when I paint it, the paint adheres nicely and you don't have anything underneath the paint in between uh, the paint and the, the metal here. So I'm going to heat it up real good and then start giving it some coats. All right, cast iron's all heated up. All the impurities are burned out of it. And uh, if you guys remember a long time ago in 2021, we bought like, like six cans of different blue 
to try to match the paint of the super truck. And uh, so I got a whole bunch of blue left over. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Rust-Oleum Sail Blue. Uh, so that's the color it's gonna be. Gotta find the top to it though, cause apparently it went missing. All right, getting the bottom started here. First coat's on. All right, coat number two is looking good. Painting it bush light blue, baby. Coat number three, she's popping now. All right, so obviously I didn't want to paint the threads on the input splines here. And I put two long bolts in where the motor mount goes there. So it gets it up off the bottom so it can dry nice without any, uh, any part of the paint touching that matters. All right, so that's where she's gonna sit and dry up nicely. Uh, and I was over here trying to collect stuff to put, uh, finish assembling the motor. So I got, um, this is the clutch that we took off of it, the car back in the day. Uh, pressure plate clutch and uh, just an old stock GM flywheel. Uh, 153 tooth. And then uh, these are the motor mounts. So slow but surely I'm trying to get all the parts I need to get the bell housing and then I'll go ahead and assemble, mate the tranny to the motor and try to stab it in double trouble and get her all lined up um but that's pretty much gonna do it for this video oh i do have a question for you guys for maybe some of you hobby stock guys out there what kind of mount should i run on this transmission now uh i'm used to this, the pro stock where i have a mid plate where you got the motor mounts um on the front obviously of the motor and then like on the uh the bell housing you have the ears coming off like a mid plate would be and i just hang i've always hung the uh, transmission just freely off the back of the motor and the bell housing. I never had a problem breaking an ear off or nothing like that with the Saginaw or now the Falcon. But uh, with the hobby stock, we're not, not going to be running a mid plate. We're not going to have the ears coming off the bell housing. So we're just going to have the saddle type mounts in the front. And then where they go into the frame at, um, they'll be solid. They won't be rubber. Um, but I'm just going to weld them to the frame at that point. And then just trying to figure out what kind of mount you're on the back. Uh, should I just go with the stock style rubber mount uh, to the cross member? Should I use a polyurethane uh, mount? I don't know. If you guys have any kind of recommendations on that, please drop me a comment. And also, remember if you guys know how to season a pellet smoker like I got properly, let me know that too. So I'm gonna do this uh, motor install and transmission install in Double Trouble in the next video. So I'm gonna end this one here now. And uh, thank you guys for coming along with me and just doing my kind of everyday life stuff, barbecuing and a little bit of what I, can get, what I can get done in the shop. Definitely making progress, having the uh, transmission completely done at this point now um, and uh, to be continued. So thank you guys for watching Tracing Racing. Remember, if it's bent, it ain't broken.